speak as Chancellor of the University of South Wales, an office which I'm very grateful and proud to hold, also as head of a college in Cambridge, and as chair of the Cambridge Trust for Commonwealth and International Scholarships. So these issues about access, about modes of learning, diversity, about the whole future of higher education globally are issues that are constantly in my mind and my heart. Africa, whose immense economic resources are barely beginning to be developed. Africa, whose immense human resources are barely beginning to be developed. Africa, which is and ought to be a challenge to the conscience of the rest of the world. Africa, which some people a decade or more ago were saying should be written off in terms of the economic future of the globe. Africa, to whom the rest of the world is in so many important ways in debt, I believe. We often talk about the debt of developing economies to developed economies. There is another kind of debt, and it is moral and social and educational, and we had better wake up to it. Africa's needs don't really need to be underscored at this point. What we see in so many contexts in the African continent is a deficit in a number of crucial areas. A deficit in good governance. A deficit in active and independent civil society. A deficit in business initiative. And a deficit in financial transparency. Church-based development organization and a great deal of what we now do in contexts like Kenya is connected with disseminating information to farmers, for example, through digital technology. The cell phone which will tell the local farmer when the best times are to sow at a time when climate prediction has become so much more uncertain. So we actually have a ready audience there, a ready public familiar with some of the technology that's needed. We're looking towards the building of sustainable societies. And that means, of course, that the education we seek to share in the African context is going to involve quite a lot of those things which do build sustainability. Not just business skills, but economics and law. I think it's extremely important to underline the need for a legally literate society. And I believe that what we've been talking about this morning is key to that diffuse, differentiated, multidimensional, to use that helpful word, approach to building society, which will not just be, as I say, about getting people into work, but about equipping people to ask the questions that will unleash further capacity. Once again, has been flagged up this morning. How do we make this a genuinely interactive, two-way process? How do we think about a programme which will not just be about, as you might say, unloading the benefits of Western culture onto poor, benighted foreigners? Because that colonial model is still very pervasive. We need to think about how the process of engaging students from other cultures and other backgrounds becomes an enrichment for the institutions we belong to. We need to make sure that it's not a one-way track because that too is part of the building of a sustainable global society. If we're thinking about building towards developmental goals in Africa, towards good governance and vigorous civil society and business initiative and financial transparency, we are thinking about something that has global implications and interlocks with what we would hope for our own societies, our own civic future. So, that's a very rapid and I'm afraid rather superficial overview of the situation I think we're in. But I would like simply to end by refocusing on those two main points which I think emerge from what I've been talking about. First of all, we are looking towards the building of a sustainable future for African economies and societies. And secondly, we're looking for something that is not just an us and them relation, 
not just a Delta on bar relation, but something which contributes to a vigorous global society and which is capable of making the best possible use of the most important resources we have, which are our students. Thank you very much.